What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm Alex from APE and today we're going to be working on the E30 VR6 project. In today's episode I'm going to be continuing to work on the engine, uh, specifically the oiling system. Uh, so the oil pan, oil pickup and oil pump modifications that I'll need to do in order to complete the swap. If you've viewed the previous episodes, uh, you've seen that in order to fit the VR6 in the E30, uh, there's really not a lot of room on the bottom of the engine. So between the engine block and the subframe, uh, it's really close since the oil pump is in the middle of the engine. It's pretty much right where the subframe is. In last episode, I finished modifying my subframe to give me some extra clearance. And now it's time to figure out what I'm going to do with the oil pump. Uh, at first what I was going to do is just modify the OEM oil pickup, cut it and re-weld it. But finally with uh, the last fitting that I did of the engine, I don't think that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is actually make a custom uh, oil pickup and oil pump plate if you will. I'll show you what it looks like. So here we have the oil pump uh, that I cut on one of the previous episodes. Normally instead of the hole here, we have this here. So this is the same part that I actually cut. My first idea was to uh, cut here the pickup and re-weld a new one. Uh, by doing that, I also needed to remove the oil pressure regulator here because it interfered with the subframe. I would have needed to reinstall a pressure regulator here. Instead, what I decided to do is actually uh, ditch this part completely. So this bottom part here that is uh, bolted on uh, and use an external oil pressure regulator I'm going to be using this uh, aftermarket inline oil pressure regulator. This is from uh, Peterson. It's a really simple setup. You have a relief, uh, it's adjustable relief. You have your pressure in, pressure out, and then your relief. What I'm going to do is uh, put in my line here from the engine block. Of course, I'm not going to be able to run the OEM oil filter location because uh, my steering column is in the way. I'm going to be doing a custom uh, oil remote, remote oil filter block mount flange, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's going to be on the engine block that I'm going to come out with the hose, go into this uh, regulator here, and then my relief out is going to come out here and go back to the oil pan and then my pressure line is going to go out to a remote oil filter that I'm going to mount somewhere in the engine bay and then go to a uh, oil cooler probably going to reuse the E30 oil cooler that is in the front bumper and then come back to the engine uh, it's a little bit more complicated than stock but got to do what you got to do. First thing I'm going to do is uh, take all the measurements of this plate here. So these here and uh, draw up a custom plate and then uh, cut it off on my plasma table. Let's go start with that. Okay, so here is the stock setup uh, on a VR6. 
depending on the model, if it's a 3.2, uh, if it's a 2.8, if it's in a Golf or a Touareg, uh, the size of the actual pickup can change. Uh, on a Touareg, it's quite longer, and on a R32 MK5, uh, it's actually an inch shorter. But in my case, it would still be too high or too low, actually. Uh, and the other thing is that it's right in the middle of the engine. Uh, so the subframe actually passes right here. Uh, that couldn't work. What I found here is after doing my prototype, uh, I actually drew up this. So this is a 3D printed version uh, for prototyping. This is actually a plate that's going to mimic the shape of the pickup here. And instead of having the pickup going to the front of the engine, I'm going to want to push it towards the rear of the engine. This plate here uh, is going to replace the pickup and is actually going to move the pickup position to the rear of the engine. If I take this one off here, And we have the new one here. This is gonna bolt up here. This is a 3D printed version, so I don't really have the treads on here. But you can still see, see it makes it a lot lower and it takes out all uh, the interference that I had on the front here for my subframe uh, and pushes the pickup to the rear of the engine. Now that I've confirmed that my 3D printed version works, Let's get this machined. Here we have the CNC machined version. Uh, so as you can see, it's an exact replica of the 3D printed version I had. Uh, so we still have our five mounting holes. Uh, our port here to pull the oil from the pan and here I have the flange that I cut out on my table where my pickup is going to be fabricated. Uh, so this will bolt up right here. Of course this is really a critical part of the engine. Uh, I really didn't have any choice to go this direction. The only other option would have been a dry sum setup. Uh, but those are not readily available for VR6 engines right now and making a custom setup or getting one done from Europe is very costly. I decided to go this way. I'm going to try it out. Uh, of course, before starting the engine, I'm gonna, once the oil pan is done, I'm going to try priming the system uh, with the shaft in the block just to be sure that I'm getting oil pressure, that everything works. And as I say, we're going to send it. Uh, if ever I get failure in that and I blow the engine, well, I'll blow the engine and we'll go dry sump afterwards. So I guess you live and you learn. So we're going to try with this. I'm pretty confident it'll work, but who knows? With this done, uh, next step is going to do the actual oil, oil pan. Sorry. So first thing I'm going to need to do is drop the oil pan flange itself and get that cut out. So let's start with that. Okay, so I finally received my custom oil pan flange. So as you can see, it's installed here. Everything fit pretty good after a couple of adjustments. This will actually be added onto the website uh, once the oil pan is done, but everything seems to fit good. Now that the flange fits, I can now drop the oil pan. In this design, the actual oil reserve will be on the back of the engine. 
So I did the oil pan as short as I could in the front to give me enough room for the steering rack. And then in the rear, I tried to put as much volume as I could. I tried to keep the same OEM oil capacity as the Touareg 3.2, which is around six liters. And I was able to uh, keep that volume with this particular design. Uh, the bottom of the pan sits flush with the bottom of the subframe. So it shouldn't be too prone to uh, getting hit on the road. Now that it's designed, I just need to cut it up on my table. So here are all the parts once cut. Now what I'm going to start by doing is doing a mock-up assembly. So just assembling all the parts with some duct tape uh, so I can be sure that everything fits together and that it fits in place. And here is the oil pan. So I just tacked it up for now. Again, if you watched my previous videos, you obviously know that I'm not a welder. So I'm still learning. Uh, this is my first big uh, project here. Bear with me, I'm learning and trying to practice as much as I can, but I'm definitely, definitely not a welder. Everything is tacked up just to ensure that it fits. So there's a little little bit of distortion, but once it will be welded to the flange, everything should be fine. Here is the oil pan back on the engine with the oil pump flange. Uh, you see here I have the flange for the oil pan pickup. Uh, that I cut out here on my table and here is the actual pickup. So it's a standard uh, Pickup that I got on Summit Racing. I think it's um, LS or Chevy 350 pickup uh, So it had three-quarter inch diameter tube. I just cut it up. I have a little elbow here that I'm gonna need to weld and this is going to come in right here, weld it up right here. Uh, I'm going to be leaving about a quarter inch to three eighths clearance, which is ideal from what I read on the internet. So let's hope that's good. So yeah, I'll just have to weld that in. Uh, once that's correctly placed, I think I'm going to make myself a little baffle to come here. I think for the rest of the pan I should be good since it is pretty low uh, without adding another baffle. And I'll just add one here on the rear to be sure that uh, the crankshaft is well lubricated. That's pretty much it for the pan, so this will need to get welded up. Uh, of course, I'll get it welded by professional welder because I'm obviously not. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And next episode, I'm going to take the engine back out of the car 
and start cleaning everything up, rebuilding the engine and working on the flywheel. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.